So this is the dyno I have built building. It's a water absorber. It's controlled from water tank with a pump that uh, fills the absorber with water. Right now I have fitted the Yama X30 engine. It's controlled by your dyno. Here we have the PC I use. Here is the water absorber itself. The outlet here on the top is in a, a vent. Uh, the next one is the water inlet. And the one on the bottom is the water outlet. Here the water comes out from the absorber, goes into this valve that I can adjust. So I can adjust the filling level of the, of the absorber. Then it goes down into the intermediate tank. In the tank I have a submersion pump and two level sensors. It will start at the high sensor and stop at the low sensor. Then it goes out in this house, goes over back to the to the storage tank. And here I have the outlet below the water level to stop bubbling. Here we have the pump that supplies the dyno with, with the water uh, to keep an even pressure. We have an overflow valve that returns uh, the unused water to the tank. Just a manometer to, to check that we set the correct pressure. So then it goes all the way back and into the, the control valve. Down here I have the water control valve. It's the valve that controls the load of the dyno. On the inlet I have a water flow meter. It has two separate outlets, one for each side of the dyno. It's controlled by a stepper motor. I have put in a zero position sensor so that your dyno unit can auto calibrate each time I start a run. Here on the front of the absorber, we have a little arm that pushes on the load cell. Here is a different view of the load cell. So there is a few sensors that I have connected to the unit. Uh, excess gas temperature, wide band lambda. And also I have here the temperature of the returned water. Uh, soon I will move that to the inlet water instead and uh, by, by some calculations calculate the return water temperature instead. Uh, it will respond more quickly that way. Now I will calibrate the dyno. I will start with zero calibration. Then I have a stick here that I put in a a small hole there. Then add the weight. Just try to make it sit still. This one I, I know the length of and I also know the mass of the of the weight. Then I just push load calibrate and save calibration. Here we have the electric cabinet, uh, 230 volts incoming power. We have a fuse, earth fault breaker, power outlet for like a PC or something like that. Fuses, 12 volt and uh, 36 volt. KM Tronic uh, unit to be able to stop and start different things. Uh, 
These ones uh, transform uh, <clears throat> 230 volt AC to 12 volt DC and 36 volt DC. We use that 6 volt DC to to drive the, the stepper and the, the stepper drive. So this is the stepper drive. And on the bottom here we have the Yordina unit. Quite simple setup. I still have some work to be done with the control parameters to get a smoother curve. As you can see now it's a little bit rough but that shouldn't be any problem with just some, some time. Here follows a few pictures from the project. The reason I have gone with rectangular pockets in the rotor and stator is because my mill can only mill 1000 lines of codes per program. Optimal would be to have elliptical pockets instead. Uh, if I'm going to build another one, I will probably outsource the milling of the rotor and stator so I can uh, make elliptical pockets instead. It's very much more efficient with elliptical pockets than it is with, with rectangular pockets if you would like the drawings on the absorber and on the control valves i will post a link in the description uh, to a etsy site where you can buy them if you would like some other drawings from the project like the sprocket or the electrical drawings or uh, the water tank or or the frame let me know Thanks for watching.